Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar today. We are excited to hear about LTL freight rate shopping and more for NAV and we have John Risky here from Next Generation Logistics who is going to be doing the presentation today. But before we get started, there are just a couple of quick pieces of housekeeping. First, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and type them into the question box and we will get them called out and answered for you at the end of the presentation. And secondly, we do record this and all of our webinars, so if you would like to view the recording later, watch it again, have someone else in your organization or share it with someone, you're more than welcome to. You will find the recording later this afternoon at www.enovia.com and um, you can also watch previous webinars as well. So now without further ado, I will turn it over to John and he will start the presentation. Angie, thank you for that introduction. Appreciate the opportunity here to uh, share with Enovia, uh, Enovia customers, uh, our solutions, Dynamics TMS. And uh, welcome to LTL Freight Rate Shopping and more for NAV. Um, and uh, as the title mentions, tired of having to send emails for quotes or visiting multiple carrier websites to get a rate, as many companies do these days, uh, or perhaps maybe you have more complex logistics requirements and require a little bit more comprehensive set of tools to help you accomplish the goals of executing your freight and transportation needs. And so we'll take you through some of the options and, and discuss those, uh, uh, the functionality around the solutions we offer today in the areas of uh, LTL trucking and also perhaps truckload shipments. And so thank you for joining and um, We'll continue through here. I have some PowerPoint slides that we'll share with you, and then we'll get into some interactive uh, screenshots and, and the software and, and take you through some of the uh, features and functionality of the offerings we provide. So as Angie said, I'm John Risky, Vice President of Business Development here at Next Generation Logistics. And um, I thought we'd introduce you to who we are. Uh, we've been in business for over 30 years, and primarily in the supply chain arena, uh, NGL provides managed freight services for many different types of shippers. Companies outsource their freight and transportation to us, and so we do leverage uh, our own software to execute the day-to-day -day operations of our customers' requirements of tendering loads and freight bill payment and strategically analyzing the data and, and collaborative uh, programs uh, along managing freight for shippers. And then we do supply chain consulting. Companies hire us to do uh, consulting projects, uh, bidding projects, freight bid projects, inbound freight opportunities. If they're evaluating their distribution network, we do engage in projects where we help companies identify their distribution network. We leverage technology to help um, come up with the optimal distribution network, the number of locations in terms of uh, forward warehouses, and the cost differential between maybe two different warehouses versus four and the cost impact relative to freight and transportation. You know, do you want to be closer to your customers and things of that nature? So we do leverage technology to come up with different scenarios that evaluate to all those cost components to come up with your optimal uh, distribution network. So it's called, basically called distribution modeling. And then last but not least, we are software uh, developers. We are a Microsoft ISV partner. We play in the NAV space, of course, as well as the other Microsoft ERP applications, GP and AX. And um, uh, the name of our application is Dynamics TMS, and we'll go through that today. So I wanted to at least break down some uh, shipper characteristics. Uh, as we all know, the NAV world speaks to various size organizations, and each organization have different requirements around their freight and transportation needs. And so this, this is just a high level breakdown. It's uh, not, not uh, in stone, of course, but uh, what we deem as a small shipper, uh, perhaps organizations may not have any logistics staff, uh, people that are dedicated to doing, uh, their sole role is, is responsible for handling the freight and transportation. So the smaller shipper uh, perhaps may not have a logistics person on staff it more or less is, is managed by customer service or perhaps a sales role that gets involved in, 
in freight shopping and in handling freight and transportation. And, and really the requirements for them are, are you know, rate shopping. They want to have access to rate shop uh, tools. Uh, they go to various carrier websites perhaps or send emails out. And, and maybe they um, are a small shipper that they don't have uh, contracts with a, you know, couple of national carriers or local carriers and they just leverage um, say the marketplace for their carrier uh, contracts and negotiations and so typically a small shipper may have uh, obviously a low volume they may be more parcel than than LTL less than truckload and their volume might be on the low side 50 to 100 orders a month perhaps may have a freight spend under five hundred thousand uh, dollars which probably would still be high uh, in this category but um, but for the most part, smaller shippers have a what I call a, a very little complexity to their freight management. So complexity is a loaded word, but because what's complex to one shipper might be uh, not complex to another. And, but um, at the end of the day, uh, this may be all time consuming to, in terms of how you consume your freight rates and how you go to market to get that information. Next, we have a medium shipper. You may have um, an organization that has one to two warehouse clerks or maybe somebody that's more dedicated to transportation, uh, but they also have dual roles in picking and staging orders. They may be a little bit more interactive in terms of working with carriers and uh, brokers, perhaps emailing them, uh, also going out for rate shopping uh, to the carrier websites and, of course, uh, the medium shipper, the, the volume grows a little bit uh, in terms of the uh, size of the orders that they push out the door. Their combination of a freight mix might be more along the lines of LTL, uh, but they also have sprinkled in there some full truckload. And um, so their freight spend obviously increases their um, anywhere between 500K and perhaps 3 million. And so um, you next then walk into uh, what we call a larger shipper. And obviously, these shippers are a little bit more complex. They may have a few more locations, and um, their their freight mix might be more predicated on the, on the side of truckload versus LTL. But they also find themselves an opportunity to what we call do load consolidations. And of course, now their freight spend uh, dramatically increases with the the larger size orders and truckload volume. And so. Uh, but for today's purpose, uh, in, in this uh, webinar, we're going to kind of break it down and just category, categorically discuss two of our solution offerings uh, from Next Generation Logistics um, that may lend itself more for the smaller shipper and, of course, uh, the medium to large shipper. And um, so with that, uh, we are actually launching a new product that will be coming out here in January, and it's called Dynamics TMS 365. And it's a web-based tool that um, essentially allows more or less uh, any shipper that has freight rate shopping requirements. Um, it's a web-based tool. All you need to do is access the URL and, and log in, and, and uh, you can do your rate shopping for LTL only at this point in time. And uh, we have the ability to store quotes. So if customer service wants to go in or sales wants to, to enter a quote, uh, that would store that information. And with this product, the Dynamics TMS365 uh, solution, it's real-time carrier connectivity. We do leverage APIs with uh, uh, the, the LTL carrier community. And uh, so we do have real-time connectivity between uh, the carriers and the solution, the software, uh, which also allows you to dispatch loads electronically. So, um, you know, you may be more... Uh, Exposed to going to your carrier's website today and and kind of logging in and entering in your origin destination information to get the rate, and then perhaps you can actually book that load directly online with that carrier. With this tool, it allows a little bit more seamless process of kind of centralizing that 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 execution piece of entering your order into uh, Dynamic CMS 365, and of course having exposure to all of your carriers. And so now this rate shopping tool looks at all your carriers that you have negotiated contracts with, and it only takes a matter of minutes um, to load carriers into this uh, solution. And so we can quickly add more carriers as you negotiate uh, your contracts with your carriers. In terms of pricing, the system is a, a low monthly cost. It's a per user licensing kind of concept. 
And um, so whether you're a one or two user customer service, or perhaps you want to extend that out to your sales team, um, uh, it's a pretty low monthly cost point of entry to allow you to do your freight rate shopping with all your carriers in a centralized location. Um, it's also a standalone product. So again, on a smaller uh, shipper side, what you do today is a little bit more manual, obviously, in terms of uh, your rate shopping. And if we can take that execution off your hands and allow you to do your rate shopping booking, I think that's the first step of this solution here at Dynamics TMS in terms of offering value. Uh, there's no connectivity today with NAV. And so as you do your freight rate shopping and booking, you have the ability to automate that process and freight bills will come in manually as you do experience today and you can enter those directly into NAD. So our Dynamics TMS 365 is a standalone product and um, but allows some efficiencies and gives you exposure to all your carriers. And these are some of the carrier partners that we work with, um, it's just a snapshot. And um, so these are all the carriers that have uh, what we call an API connection with our Dynamics TMS 365. I can't necessarily put all the carriers, uh, they wouldn't fit on this, this slide, slide deck here, but um, we do have more carriers. And, and typically it's the tier one carriers. So a lot of regional carriers uh, are still working on technology to come up with APIs and we're, we're also growing that API list of all the carrier partners. So. Um, with that, let's go ahead and step out of the PowerPoint, and I'd like to get into the software and show you a little bit of how we can go in and do some rate shopping. So I'm actually going to log into the Dynamics TMS 365 system here with my Microsoft account. And um, so we'll go ahead and log in. And it'll take me to um, our site where Based on your roles, you may have access to different um, uh, pieces of functionality within the system, but for today's purpose, we'll talk a little bit about the rate shopping tool here. And so within the Dynamics CMS 365 solution, of course, you can go in and uh, do a quick and easy rate shopping. You can go in and enter. So as you enter your postal code um, in my actions up here, um, I can go in and enter my items. So again, it's a little bit more of a manual entry here, uh, just as you would to your carrier's website. You put in your product class, the pallet, the length, times width, times height, of course, is becoming more prevalent in the uh, LTL world because it impacts pricing. So you can enter in your order information and um, you go out and get the rates and of course what this is doing now is going out to the carrier sites and it's going to pull back collectively all the rates that you have uh, for this origin destination pair for each carrier and uh, sorry about the logo is not popping up here but the system will return the total cost and, look, and list these carriers low to high with their transit times whether or not they're interline and what interline means to some of you who may not be familiar with this is uh, you see this carrier has a direct point. That means that carrier is going to pick up and make the final delivery. This particular carrier, Roadrunner, um, they they don't uh, they don't. It's not specified in the uh, interline connectivity, but typically if it says interline, that means Roadrunner will make the pickup, but Roadrunner is not going to make the final delivery. So that's what that interline point means. And so you can see here all the different rates. So with a click of a button here, you have now visibility of all your carrier rates within the system and it ranks them low to high. And so um, uh, in this example, I don't have my book it button, but if I wanted to book it with this carrier, I would have a book it button here and you push that button and now it sends electronic dispatching to that carrier to do the booking. And then Roadrunner or AAA Cooper will come in and uh, pick up that load. Um, if I clear this out, I have an address book here. And so I can go in and search for a particular origin location and set that origin location as my origin. And then if I wanted to uh, look for my destination, I can find my destination location here. And set that as my destination. And 
I just see this here. So now I have my origin destination um, for a order, and I can go in now and enter in my items. I can enter in my weight, as I mentioned, the class. And again, the class is, is very important to understand uh, and making sure that we have uh, proper classification for the rate shop, and otherwise the carriers will ding you in terms of uh, additional charges for that rate shop. I also have accessorials, so if you need inside delivery or special requirements around uh, the uniqueness of that origin destination pair, um, the system will allow you to put in, let's say, COD charges or liftgate service. And so now I have, uh, again, another, all my carriers that are listed here with the, the return of the rates, and you'll see who are direct shippers and who are not. And um, if I expand this black arrow here, it kind of shows you the details of the results of the rates and how we obtain the rate information. It shows the fuel surcharge if there was a discount applied here. It shows a discount. And um, of course, from a connectivity standpoint, if there are any errors, the errors would display there. And so now this makes it a kind of a centralized location for anybody that has access to do the rate shop quoting and now booking of the loads. And so this is our Dynamics TMS 365 tool that would allow you to do your rate shopping uh, directly online and booking the load and automate that carrier connectivity of dispatching the load with the carrier. So we'll go ahead and jump back into the PowerPoint and continue here from where I left off and talk a little bit more about uh, another solution that we have that uh, is more or less geared for maybe the medium-sized, larger shipper who, uh, who I mentioned have a little bit more complex needs. Uh, they have a full-fledged logistics department. Um, they may have multiple locations. They, requires, they require a little bit more automation with their freight and transportation. And so um, because of the various locations and the different moving parts in their organization, they want to kind of really manage the exception and, and leverage some functionality around driving efficiencies in managing their supply chain and, and logistics. They also want to minimize risk. And as we know today, there's more and more ownership on the shipper in terms of risk uh, relative to shipping freight and the carriers that they choose. So they may have uh, more controls around the, the regulations of carrier compliance and things of that nature. Um, they want a little bit more visibility across their freight and um, uh, perhaps accrual generation and monitor performance and have access to dashboards and, and various uh, KPIs that drive their supply chain. And of course, again, their volume is, is greater, it picks up and, and um, they have more full truckload or the opportunities to uh, build multi-stop truckloads. And so um, we'll get into our Dynamics Transportation Management Solution. Um, again, it has more robust functionality. It's entirely connected to NAV, as you'll see here, and it gives them visibility to do carrier selection, load planning with some optimization components within the TMS system here, freight audit, a full-fledged freight audit and settlement process that we'll see here in a moment, and again, uh, KPIs and dashboards from a reporting standpoint. We also have rate shopping, as you kind of saw before, and scheduling. So um, we have dock scheduling that uh, enables the warehouse to manage their docks and schedule appointments, whether it's on the pickup side or delivery side. And um, some of you may be aware, uh, more regulations are coming down with the hours of service um, in terms of uh, making sure that these trucks are being loaded in a timely, uh, efficient manner. And so having more control and visibility of scheduling appointments at your dock has become more and more important uh, than ever before. Managing tariffs and rates and negotiating rates and managing that look, that information, of course, uh, is all driven by a TMS system. And then the track and trace, having the, the visibility of uh, from when the load was picked up to delivery and having a centralized location for anybody in your organization to come to a, a portal system and look up an order to identify the location, the pickup, the delivery, and all the milestones in between that from uh, origin to destination. And so uh, why don't we go ahead and, and jump in now to Dynamics TMS. And first, I'm just going to kind of introduce you to um, uh, how we interact with NAV with the Dynamics TMS product. 
As you see here in my departments, we do now have a transportation department. And so um, we do have some screens available to users uh, within the NAV solution. And um, uh, basically, you'll see here the UI is outside of, of NAV. And um, but we do have some roles within NAV that uh, perhaps may lend itself for accounting people. And you'll see that here uh, later on. But if I go into the sales order process here, I just want to kind of start by how we get orders from, from NAV. And um, at the point in time that customer service or procurement enters an order, whether it's sales order, transfer order, or purchase order, that order, once it's released, is, is automatically sent to the, the Dynamics TMS system. And so it's real time and um, it's actually really fast, so fast that by the time uh, I switch from uh, NAV to um, uh, the Dynamics TMS solution, uh, it, it's there before I can even push a, a button. So it's pretty quick in terms of connectivity. And at the point in time that that sales order is released, um, that order now is sitting in uh, the Dynamics TMS system. So I'll be, I'll be wearing a few different hats today in terms of uh, the role of a logistics person, maybe customer service and of course accounting. So we'll take you through some of those roles here. And, and now we're looking at the Dynamics TMS product and um, uh, the Dynamics TMS product has uh, some alert capabilities, allows users to subscribe to alerts. As I mentioned, managing risk uh, as a part of uh, uh, you know, a TMS solution and making sure that we have carriers insurance and compliance. And so we do have uh, alert capabilities within the application for those that uh, have more of those complex requirements to uh, prevent yourself from booking a load with a carrier that may have expired insurance. So these are desktop alerts that would pop up and also email alerts. And so from a navigation point here on the left-hand side, this is where I can search information associated with my warehouse locations. And so you can see here that we have the alpha code, the legal entity. And so for some of those larger shippers that may have multiple warehouses, you see um, all the various warehouses that um, would be part of the TMS system. And if you control freight out of any of these locations, essentially we treat them as one of your own locations, whether it's a co-packer, third-party facility, um, we see them as one of your ship from locations. And so uh, we do have role security uh, within the TMS system. So if I wanted to prevent a user from seeing warehouse uh, number two, I can prevent that from happening. And now they can only see the warehouse locations that they have access to. And so uh, I mentioned to you freight audit is very big in terms of making sure that uh, uh, we audit the freight bills and prevent duplications of freight invoices, perhaps coming in from carrier vendors. So we do have a freight tolerance um, here within the TMS system. So you can see through tolerance settings on a low and high percentage basis. And the concept is with the TMS solution is come up with our expected freight cost so we can generate freight accruals and that information so that when the freight bill comes in and that freight bill can come in a couple different ways into the TMS system, uh, it can be manually entered in. So you receive your paper invoices and enter them into the TMS system directly. It'll go through the audit function. But we also have an EDI 210. EDI 210s can come directly into TMS. And then last but not least is our web portal that extends visibility and communication with carriers where carriers can come into the portal system and enter their freight bill. All those activities would push that data through the freight audit function and it'll do it, its comparison of the freight bill versus the, the, the expected cost. And now if it passes audit, that information is automatically sent to NAV and you'll see that. And if it fails audit, remains in TMS until in fact that that freight bill has been rectified and, and then re-ran through the audit function. So. Um, but that's all controlled by you in terms of those tolerances. Uh, in terms of carriers and carrier providers, uh, the TMS system obviously would store all your carriers. We go through the BitNav vendor table, send the carriers and synchronize the carrier vendor information into the TMS system. And now we would have a whole list of all your carriers within the TMS system. We store the, the contact information, the name, the dispatch offices, their qualifications, as I mentioned, insurance making sure that they're qualified, their MC number, and some of the risk management tools 
that we have in TMS. And so um, I don't know whether you're shipping food, high value goods, whatever the case might be. We do have some other risk management parameters that can be turned on to protect yourself from shipping some, uh, let's say a full truckload that may exceed that of $100,000 insurance that you have with the carrier. So if you're shipping lobsters, obviously you wanna make sure that you have enough uh, uh, insurance that that, carriers, that that the carrier has, and you don't wanna put a load of lobsters on a carrier that doesn't have enough insurance that at least covers the value of the goods. So we have some functionality, whether it's life science products or some other type of product, that, or perhaps you may negotiate lower rates for a lower insurance. And so you can ratchet this up, ratchet it down, but it's functionality that will protect the shipper and making sure that you're compliant with your insurance. And uh, so moving to the right here, qualifications, uh, as I mentioned, the fuel addendum is very important these days in terms of identifying who my lowest cost carrier. And so the TMS system stores the fuel. We go out to the Department of Energy to identify the fuel for that week, and it bounces off the fuel matrix, whether it's your own matrix or the carrier's matrix, and it'll come up with the, the actual fuel cost for that week and do that calculation on a percentage basis or a rate per mile basis. And so all that is managed within the TMS to come up with, again, our, not only our line haul cost, but our, our fuel cost in, to, to gather our expected freight cost for the shipment. And so this is a little bit of the carrier side. And um, if I just go into the tariff system here, if I click on tariff, um, this is a little bit more comprehensive for um, those type of shippers that may have complex transportation needs and need to manage truckload and LTL combinations of their freight, uh, their freight partners. And they wanna manage their contracts and tariffs within the system. And so if I go into our tariff system here and I filter the information by facility. So again, you can have multiple facilities here uh, within the TMS system. And if you go in and select a facility, I can go in and select a carrier. And these are all my carrier tariffs that I have loaded into the system. And the tariff system supports truckload, of course, whether it's a rate per mile, flat rate, a rate per pound, rate per pallet. Um, you know, we have various combinations of managing tariffs for carriers. You have an effective from date and to date. We manage revision controls within the TMS system so that if you have seasonality or negotiate seasonal rates, January to March, you can insert the March uh, tariff and then have another tariff that kicks up, say, in April. And so you have that ability to manage those type of contracts that you have with carriers. And if I expand service here, this gets is into more or less the type of rates that you have, and this is a truckload tariff that are distance-based. And so you see that I have uh, country rates at the city, uh, the state level rates, I have city level rates, or I have zip code precision. So the concept here is that when an order comes into the TMS system, it'll look at the minimum value here and or the rate per mile and identify the, the right rate calculation for this postal code and come up with the rates and do that calculation for truckload. And so, um, and then we also have fees, fees associated with truckload tariffs, stock fees. Again, if your business is along the lines of multi-stop truckload business, you have the ability to enter fees and the system will calculate these fees automatically as part of our expected freight costs. And so um, all your contracts and everything, whether it's an inbound contract or an outbound contract can be managed simply by using an import-export tool that we have to uh, share and, and import and export the, the freight rate data directly within the TMS system here. And so this is both for dry tariffs and also temperature control, uh, inbound and outbound freight. So um, I'll jump back now into the TMS system here. And um, we talked a little bit about your warehouse locations, the carriers, um, let's go into my load status board. And as I mentioned, when customer service now um, releases that sales order, the sales order comes over directly to the TMS. And obviously what we need is what origin is it shipping from? Who's my customer that it's shipping to? And what carrier that we're gonna assign it to? So we're looking at one of many screens that uh, shippers could leverage within a Dynamics TMS tool here and I've got my carrier that's been assigned here called Red LTL, my sales order number 1255. 
it's shipping from this warehouse going to this destination and here's the load date and um, so if I go into the order itself by clicking on this icon it takes me into the order we're shipping from my blue warehouse here's my sales order number 1255 and these are all the dates that would come over from nav that would populate the requested load date the ship date if I click on the details tab here it takes me into the item information and um, a lot of shippers a lot of customers of nav users of nav uh, don't oftentimes have their item card built out correctly um, but if you're leveraging TMS you know it's important to have all that item information built out because carriers are, are you know rating shipments either on a rate per pound a product classification NMSC or FAK class or um, you know dimensional freight so all those items uh, need to be part of the the item card in nav to be sent over to TMS so TMS can properly calculate that freight uh, rate for you. And so you can see here the level of granularity that we bring in, the item information, country of origin, lot number tracking. And so by default, the TMS system automatically allocates that freight cost across the lines of an order here. So um, we do that freight cost allocation automatically for shippers. And therefore, now you can analyze your freight data basically all the way down to the lot level here. And so um, from here, you know, shippers can go in and either assign a new carrier and um, they can go in and select and see the various carriers that service this origin destination pair. This is a pretty light example of just two carriers. Uh, we, sh we show you red LTL and it has a star here. TMS has a, a function around preferred carriers. So again, if your shipping needs are a little bit more complex and you have five carriers that can service one customer to uh, from one origin to another destination, you have the ability to go into the system and identify who your preferred carriers are. Maybe some customers don't like using Red LTL or they prefer Red LTL. So we have the ability to seed or give that visual indicator to the user community. Hey, Red LTL is the preferred carrier for this particular customer. And now the users can make better decisions along those lines in terms of uh, executing the, the freight and transportation uh, uh, piece. And so when you go out for a rate shop here in the tariff, in the tariff system, it's going to pull back all rates. And so now you have visibility of not only my LTL carriers, but also my truckload or perhaps intermodal. So if you use intermodal, the TMS can manage your intermodal freight and transportation needs. And so from here, all you have to do is go in and select the carrier and it'll calculate the rate and insert the rate here. And so now my carrier is applied. If I want to, uh, a couple other things you can do within this particular screen. Um, if I wanted to go out to the spot market, I can go get a spot rate, which may be a negotiated rate uh, interacted between a broker or um, maybe I want to post a load. If I wanted to post a load to what we call, there's various load boards in the industry, or our Dynamics TMS system has internal controls where you can post a load to your internal carrier base. Why that is so important is because those carriers are already set up as vendors in NAV, and we already have those vendors set up in the TMS system and have their insurance and their information all compiled and stored within TMS. So the posting capabilities within TMS can be done within your controlled carrier base for compliance and regulations and making sure that you have all that information taken care of. So you have the ability to post this information. And last but not least, if I wanted to tender this to the carrier, all I have to do is hit the tender button. And um, again, we can tender this through uh, EDI, a web portal, or through uh, the electronic API dispatching. So various ways we can communicate with carriers. And for the sake of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and accept this load. And, and now it shows that the load has been accepted by the carrier. We have the date and time stamp that it was accepted. And we also have a carrier assigned pro number associated with this particular shipment. So this is a simple order, whether it's a truckload shipment or an LTL shipment, I just wanted to break it down to you here of the details of a single, single order when customer service releases a sales order, I can go into the sales order in TMS and do my planning and assign the carrier. There's a lot of automation that TMS can drive. If I wanted to have auto tender, 
I can have the system just basically auto tender it without any user intervention. So there's a lot of automation. If a user wanted to uh, turn some of that feature and functionality on, you have that capability of doing so. Next, I want to take us into another screen. And again, depending on the complexities of your freight and transfer transportation needs, or perhaps the opportunistic or the opportunities that may lend itself in your freight and transportation uh, daily activities, we have a load planning screen here that allows traffic managers to look at various orders and begin doing what we call load consolidations or, or routing orders onto a truck and putting orders in a proper stop sequence. Anytime that you take orders and, and, and apply it to a rate per mile versus a, a rate per pound, nine times out of 10 is gonna be cheaper. And so the opportunities for many shippers, if they have a lot of LTLs that are larger in size, where you can put two or three orders on a truck, we have the ability to allow users to do load consolidations. And I have some examples here where I've got two orders, one in Wisconsin and Illinois, finally in Illinois, I've got stop one, stop two. And if I wanted to just move orders around on a truck, I can use drag and drop to move orders around on a truck. And um, just using simple tools like this saves a lot of time for shippers. If I wanted to uh, have the system go out and sequence the stops in a proper stop sequence, I can have the system go out and get the miles and put the orders in a proper stop sequence based on minimized miles if I didn't know what the miles were or what the minimized or what the best route was. And from here now, I have access to my carriers that service that origin and destination information. And now I have a complete look at my preferred carriers or all my truckload carriers that may service. And again, when we do the lowest, we do the cost comparison, we look at all the fees associated associated with that carrier. So you're looking at the line haul or the flat rate plus the fuel. And again, these games are played by these carriers. And um, so the system makes um, a rec recommendation of the lowest cost carrier and the users can execute that. And from here, all you have to do is go in and tender the load accordingly. And so we have capabilities of doing the load consolidation. We also have an optimizer that if I push that button, the system will go out and for the data set here that I'm looking at for all orders that are shipping on 12.6, I can look at that solution and have the system tell me who the, the optimal, what the optimal routes are, put orders together on a like a truck and have it reduce the miles, go out and select the lowest cost carrier and come up with a solution for me. And then I can either execute that solution or perhaps if I wanted to, I can change that solution. So we do have some additional more comprehensive requirements or functionality around uh, load consolidation and route optimization tools here for those type of shippers that may need that type of functionality. So that takes us into some of the load planning tools. And um, what I wanted to do now was uh, basically log out here and take us into the portal system. I have set up a, an order here. I'm gonna log into the portal as a carrier. And so as a carrier now, Carrier has access to this web portal, and the carriers can do, like I said, accept or reject. They can provide status updates um, and communicate with your transportation department if they don't leverage EDI. They can also enter their freight bills directly into the portal system. So at the point in time that that load delivers, the carriers now can enter in their freight invoice. And if I just put in my freight invoice, whatever that is, and if the rate is okay, they're, you know, they can change that. And if they save that information, I have a success message. And now that freight bill removes itself from the screen here. So again, the web portal is a tool that allows carriers to communicate with you. It allows them to enter ETAs and delivery confirmation, but it also allows you to enter in the carriers enter in their freight bills to help alleviate that workload, that effort that is put on transportation, your logistics department, or maybe perhaps your accounting department. And so carriers can enter their freight bills directly online. I'm going to come back to that here, but I also wanted to share with you a couple other features within the Dynamics TMS system here. And um, so I have a scheduling tool. As I mentioned, you can go in and schedule appointments. Um, and using drag and drop, you can go in and select the warehouse 
And um, if I go into today's view, I'll have an order here and I'll, I can go in and just simply drop an order here and schedule the appointment. So it's CRST truckload, save this. And now on a calendar like view, you can see here, I've got many dock doors, but um, I have my appointment set. If I do a right click functionality stating that this carrier checked in, and, and this is all important information as we enter in to kind of like a new dynamic in freight and transportation. Shippers need to be more efficient on their dock and loading carriers. Carriers are on the clock when they back into your dock. And so making sure that you load them in a timely fashion uh, to get them on the road, you know, again, hours of service are gonna come into play with ELDs and things of that nature. So um, we track all this information and allow you to report against this when he checks out um, and he leaves the building. So visually now you have some cues as to what's going on with the warehouse and the dock, whether or not a carrier has been here. So that's our web portal. And um, again, customer service can do the track and trace. And if I just filter in by an order number here, if I just enter in an order number here and I go into this order. And if I'm customer service, I can see what's transpired with this order. So I tender the load, the appointment's been set, uh, the load actually delivered, had a required delivery date on 12-7, the load uh, had an appointment at 8 a.m., but he delivered at 7.30 this morning. So again, we have a central repository for all that tracking information for customer service uh, to enter into the portal system. Uh, now what I would like to do is talk a little bit more about the accounting side. As I mentioned to you, uh, Freight bills can come in. You can receive paper-based freight bills and enter them directly into the TMS system. We have EDI 210s that can come into the TMS system and go through that audit function. Or as I demonstrated, I walked into, I, I loaded or, or logged in to the portal site as a carrier and entered a freight bill directly into the portal site. And so what happens when a carrier has access to entering his freight bills that automatically will go into, and if it passes audit, it goes into our purchase invoice worksheet. So you see that sales order here, 1256, it had a freight expense of $500. So again, the carrier entered his freight bill here, JWR998, and it passed audit, which now is sitting in NAV. So accounting, all they have to do is go in and process this and um, go in and post this information. I just want to illustrate how seamless this is and times, you know, a lot of time savings here for accounting, no more manual entry of, of entering these freight bills or creating freight POs uh, within NAV. And last but not least, we want to pay this freight bill. So I'm going to go ahead and, and demonstrate this. And um, so let me go ahead and just cue this up. Enter my carrier document number. And unfortunately, I got to print checks to screen here. I can't print my own checks and cash them, unfortunately. And um, so we'll just go through this process here, printing, cutting checks. And now ultimately I'm gonna post this and we have a success. And if I just go back into the purchase invoice worksheet, you'll see now that the freight bill has been paid here, check number 359. And I have a check box here that this has been paid. And so if I go back into this record in the TMS system, I believe that was sales order 1256, you'll see now that I have in my financial tab that I have my freight bill number. Again, I didn't enter this. I entered this as a carrier, right? The traffic group didn't enter this. The date that it was entered, the amount, and here's a check number that was paid from NAV for that particular carrier. And so a total seamless order to cash process between NAV and um, TMS, allowing uh, users to manage their carriers, manage their rates, execute their freight and transportation needs, save time when it comes to uh, freight bill entry and automating that information. I'll just finalize a couple things here with reporting. 
we have various reports that drill down to the SKU level information. And so you can go in and run custom reports. We leverage SSRS for our custom reports. And um, so, for example, if I just go in and show you, uh, say, freight expense, you can do a date range here. I'll do it out to today. And for all carriers, I want to see what my freight expense is for all carriers. And now it shows you the breakdown of the freight expense by carrier here, my weight, my base, my miles, and all the accessorials. So TMS here, Dynamics TMS is pretty comprehensive in tracking, you know, your fuel, the unloading, the detention charges, or any other accessorials that are pertinent to your business. You can push this data out in various formats, PDF, uh, Excel, Word, however you want to share that information. So pretty granular when it comes to various uh, KPIs and dashboards. And so, again, just to illustrate some dashboard capabilities, we take that data and, and leverage graphics and things of that nature to kind of illustrate the data in different views to give people different uh, ideas of what's going on other than just looking at Excel spreadsheets. So, um, I'll go ahead and jump back into the PowerPoint just to finish up on a couple things here. Um, again, the benefits of Dynamics TMS and Dynamics TMS 365, again, it's a solution that uh, you can grow into if you're just looking for an easy solution to rate shopping and booking loads with carriers, you can do that, or if your needs are a little bit more complex, the TMS system will give you better visibility of your supply chain, allow users to make better decisions in terms of carrier selection, building multi-stop loads, reducing miles, and maximizing capacity. You can measure performance both on the carrier side and uh, your internal people side. You can monitor risks, manage uh, costs, whether it's proactive or reactive, and, and ultimately, sorry about that, your freight spend. Again, it's all relative to the type of organization. If you're shipping temperature controlled, your freight spend is a little bit higher than more or less the dry shippers. However, the dry shippers may be more transaction intense, and so there's a heavy amount of effort placed on the accounting and you know 500 to 700 freight bills is a lot of a lot of time to touch all those freight bills and so having an automated system will reduce the time there for you so dynamics tms for now the simpler faster extensible we do work with uh, dynamics nav 13 15 16 17 and of course 18 and um, with that we'll take us into any types of questions uh, that you may have, and I'll open up the floor there, Angie. Okay, John, thank you. We do have a couple of questions. When will you get the truck bill of landing? I'm sorry, bill of lading. Apologize for that. Yeah, so right now, no, great question. The, the TMS system generates the bill late. We have various packing slips, bill ladings uh, as part of the TMS solution. And um, so that's a standard report out of the TMS system. And again, every NAV implementation is a little bit different. Some re leverage a warehouse system, some don't. And so a lot of times shippers will leverage the bill lading within TMS. And um, so we have that ability with, uh, within the TMS system to generate a, a bill lading. And a ship manifest is also a packing list. Okay, thank you for that. And then um, I think you already answered this one. What versions of NAV does your software support? And I believe you said um, as far back as 2013? That's correct. And um, so we work with 2013 through 2018. And uh, as I mentioned, we're an ISV and we've created our integration with NAV using design patterns and extensions. And so um, a lot of the um, unit codes or uh, the code units are in installed within the NAV system. We had a couple screens as I demonstrated on the accounting side, but from a day-to-day -day execution standpoint, a lot of the users are in our own UI for Dynamics TMS, which minimizes the impact from any user of NAV upgrading to the next release. And so uh, the unique feature that we have is our integration and the ability to migrate from one version to the next and that's why I say we work with 13 through 18. Okay, thank you. How many LTL carriers do you support? Yes, and so um, on that API that I mentioned, um, right now in the industry, it's kind of transforming in the carrier industry and in the, in the technology that they're using. 
And so we basically connect with, I'd say 99% of the domestic, some Canadian LTL carriers. And so uh, those are your tier one type carriers. You may also have a carrier base that is regionally based, uh, service two, service three, like Joe's Trucking. A lot of those service two, service three type carriers are not leveraging technology. So the API basically covers uh, maybe 100, over 100 LTL carriers in the marketplace, uh, which, are, which is a, a huge amount of the you know, domestic carrier base. Um, the TMS system also has the capability of storing those, you know, secondary and tertiary carriers for their LTL rates. So we can accommodate all carrier rates uh, within the TMS system. Just one other note with that, um, the APIs is very prevalent in the dry industry. You won't, if you're an LTL, I'm sorry, if you're a temperature controlled shipper, the technology is very slow to come to market for these guys and I be, believe it's more competitive. And so uh, the drive carrier base uh, are, are lend itself to more technology than the temperature controlled. So um, you won't find APIs out there today for, for temperature controlled carriers. Hopefully they'll get there. Okay, thank you. And are you able to post loads Yes, good question. And, um, you know, there's a, the environment that we face today in the transportation, uh, a lot of shippers are leveraging the spot market and, and there is a huge shortage in capacity, uh, no matter what industry you're in, uh, what type of piece of equipment you're using. If it's a truck and it's got wheels and it's rolling on the ground, there is a capacity shortage. Even in the rail industry, there's shortages there. So uh, the Dynamics TMS system, as I kind of alluded to before, has a couple different ways to help facilitate that process and streamline that process uh, between a shipper and the carrier partner community. We do have a load posting uh, tool that would go out to a particular load board and it would post that load and allow carriers to communicate with you. That's one way, that's an extended service that we provide. Another way, as I mentioned, is an internal posting that would allow shippers to post loads to their intra uh, carrier base so if they've got 20 carriers they can post that to the portal system and now the carriers can enter in the rates the users would have visibility of that posting and then make a determination based on you know rate a through z and communicate and, and execute those loads so that load posting is, is nice for um, the, the complete seamless integration with NAV and TMS because that vendor number is already set up, the compliance and the insurance is already in place. You know that you're not at risk when you go out to the, unlike going to the load boards, you never know who you're going to get to move your load. So a couple different ways we can do load postings. Okay, a couple more questions. When will you cover international freight? Yeah, good question. So uh, international freight, um, we do that today. So I really focus on the domestic side today. So within the TMS system, you have the ability to do international freight. And so what in, what's all involved with international freight? Uh, we have an export dock tool. So I can take the data from the TMS system and put it through a export documentation system that will help you generate all your export docs. And so we can create your certificate of origin, your NAFTA agreements, um, custom inf uh, information. You can do your AES filings. But the other more complex scenario that drives international business is that you may have one, more than one mode of transportation. You've got the carrier that picks it up, takes it to the port, and then you may have the responsibility from port to port. So you have the ocean vessel. And so the TMS system has some logic in it to take a single sales order and accommodate mode one, mode two, mode three, where you may have three different expense vendors, three different modes of transportation, and all associate that to the one sales order. So we do have the capabilities of managing international. It's just how extensive is your international movement. Um, we're talking inbound, I'm sorry, we're talking outbound freight, but the TMS also manages inbound freight as well. Okay, thank you. And another question. Does your solution audit freight bills? Absolutely. And so um, 
you know, I think there was a figure used, and it takes anywhere between 10 to $15 to touch a freight bill. And um, that's a huge overhead for a lot of companies. And uh, I'll segment the market, you know, dry shippers who have, you know, 100 to 500, 700 freight bills a month, it's very time intense. And to manually enter that information into NAV uh, is very tedious. Um, and so we do audit freight bills. We also allow for electronic freight bills to come into the TMS, and they will not get to NAV unless it passes audit. So that example that I shared with you where I logged in as a carrier is one way that the freight bill audit process and freight bill entry can be done directly into the portal, allowing carriers to do that effort, that workload, um, and smooth out that, that inefficiency there. But um, we do leverage EDI 210s. For that data to come in and of course the freight bill would be audited by TMS directly. Okay I think that answers all the questions. If anybody has any further questions please go ahead and type them into the question box. Yeah I'll just say this on the auditing. Um, you know, uh, we're kind of expanding that, uh, taking it to a whole nother level with the auditing function. And, and um, right now, I talk about the build cost versus the expected cost, but now we'll actually be auditing at the accessorial level. And so, um, for those of you that are in the temperature control world, or uh, even if you have these various accessorials that they call unloading charges, um, there's a variability to that freight cost. Um, on every shipment. And so we will have the ability to place a tolerance at the accessorial level. So when carriers enter their freight bills and or the EDI 210s come in, it'll go through and audit not only just the total cost, but it's going to audit the variability cost of the accessorials. And you can put your own threshold now, again, to alleviate more uh, of the user involvement of, of touching those transactions and let the system do all that audit function, not only at the line level, line haul level, but at the accessorial level. And so again, we're gonna have that uh, coming up here in, in about two weeks at the accessorial level for auditing capabilities. And uh, again, saving more time for the, the shipper. Okay, and we do have one more question. How do you treat container loads? How do we treat container loads? Um, uh, it's a loaded question. Um, don't know if uh, I'll just say this. Again, if you're talking about a specific piece of equipment, um, a container, um, you know, we can set up tariffs and rates in the TMS system by equipment. So you can have a container, a 20 foot container that might be $1,000 from point A to point B, or a 40 foot container could be $2,000. So depending on the size of the order, um, at the selection process where you had that drop down list, it would visually show you here's my rate for a 20 foot container, here's my rate for a 40 foot container. Now, the thing is, if in fact I had an order for 25,000 pounds and the 20 foot container can only handle 20,000 pounds, obviously that piece of equipment is not capable of handling that order. So the system has controls around the equipment and the rate versus the order. Uh, metrics and identifying which piece of equipment is the right piece of equipment for the order that you're uh, executing. So um, in terms of managing container rates, we can do that um, directly within the TMS system, if that's the direct question. I don't know if I answer that fully. Okay, we do have another one. Um, the questions are more on space. Will the full order fit on a container? Yeah, so um, so cases, weight, pallets, cubes are the metrics that we need to identify, um, you know, the, the container size. So um, if you cube out and that's your business, we, we look at cubes and making sure that cube is a, an element of capacity. So again, um, if in fact that you have an order, uh, that exceeds that capacity, obviously it wouldn't go on that, that piece of equipment, uh, i.e. A, a 40 foot container. So whether it's cases, weight pallets, cubes, 
We need that information to come over from NAV so that the TMS can make those decisions for you and, and what's the cubulization of any particular piece of equipment. And so um, we, we, we can look at all those various metrics and identify whether or not we had the right piece of equipment. You can also take multiple orders and put it into a container. So if you've got two 20,000 pound orders, I can take those two orders and put them into a 20 or 40 foot container and what we do, what we call consolidated, consolidating two orders as I kind of demonstrated. Okay, thank you very much for the informative answers to all those questions. Um, if anyone has any further questions that you would like to contact John personally, his information is on the screen, so you're more than welcome to contact him and he can have a further discussion with you. And I just want to thank everyone for attending the webinar and remind you that it is recorded, so it will be available this afternoon at www.anovia.com. And please check out our events page for future webinars. We do have a few more coming up in the month of December. Next Tuesday, we're having a webinar with Beck and SPS Communications. Um, and then we're also having two more the following week. Um, our very own Tom Doran is presenting uh, customer Relationship Management, and Dynamic Web is presenting one on digital transformation in the business-to-business. -business. So thank you, everyone, for attending. Again, I appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. If we don't, have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.